now, what's your name and what's your breed? How did it make you feel when you went on that walk and that other dog didn't want to stop and sniff? I know it's painful, but can you talk a little bit about the last time you were called a bad boy? That was fun. Hi, <laughs> I'm Jeremiah, and with the help of my dog, Duncan, I'm going to share with you the five steps I used to create an amazing film interview. All right, let's get started. Let me begin by saying that this is not a video on how to light an interview or where to place the camera. There are lots of other great videos out there already, so if that's what you're looking for, then stop this video right now and check them out. But then come back here because I'm going to share with you what I think are the really important five steps you need in order to create an amazing interview. And that really begins with your process as a filmmaker, your process as the interviewer. It's fine if an interview is well lit and well shot, that's, that's what you want. But if the questions you're asking aren't good or if you are not interviewing effectively, then it doesn't matter. You've just shot a very pretty but meaningless documentary interview. What I'm going to be talking about in this video is what can best be summed up in a quote by the author Michael Rabinger. He said, interviewing at its best is a form of displaced authorship. It is the midwifery of testimony and heartfelt eloquence. With those words as our guide, let's jump into the five steps. So step one to a great interview is doing a pre-interview with your subject before you get on set. And besides the research you do, this is one of the most important things you can do in pre-production. And when you're doing your pre-interview, it's important to follow these simple rules. The questions you ask should be non-intrusive. You're trying to get to know your subject. This is not a lighter version of the interview you're going to be doing. Discuss things in general. Get to know each other. And most importantly, look for stories you can ask about in more detail when they're in front of the camera. This is a casual conversation that you're having between two people. Don't record anything no cameras. This is really just to get to know each other and set the stage for the interview. The number two step is to develop trust between you and your subject. Now, take some time with this. Building rapport and trust with your subject will go a long way towards creating the opportunity for a great interview on camera. And you can do this by being honest with the subject and sharing your vision of the project. Allow the person you're going to be interviewing to even ask their own questions. And if possible, spend some time with your subject before you put them in front of the camera and shine those bright lights on them. My number three step is... Oh, looks like we have a bonus tip. Okay, the bonus for this video is to make sure you ask the person that you're interviewing, this is when they're on camera, ask them to incorporate the question you're asking into their answer. For instance, you ask the question, tell me about that time that the grizzly bear attacked you on the Appalachian Trail. <gasps> the common question, right? And rather than that person just jumping in and answering something like, oh, it was horrible, all of a sudden smelled like rotting salmon, and then before I knew it, my tent had collapsed around me and I was being dragged through the forest. <laughs> Rather than that, your subject would answer, when that grizzly bear attacked me on the Appalachian Trail, it was horrible. It smelled like rotting salmon. This will save a lot of time and trouble for you when you get into post-production. Okay, step three is to make sure your interview is an exploration. Now you do this by asking open-ended questions, right? No yes or no answers. And ask your questions in a specific order. Start off with easy questions. These are the basics, right? Their name, where they're from, basic information about them and the subject you want them to talk about. Now, what's your name and what's your breed? Then go into specifics. This is where you're gonna ask them some particular stories or anecdotes. How did it make you feel when you went on that walk and that other dog didn't want to stop and sniff? And finally, near the end of the interview, you want to get into the emotional, or maybe if that's what you're trying to do, some of the more confrontational stuff. This is where you're bringing your interviewee into areas they might be less comfortable talking about. 
I know it's painful, but can you talk a little bit about the last time you were called a bad boy? So the arc of your questions goes like this. It goes from facts to emotions. It goes from the familiar to the unfamiliar. And this brings me to step number four, and that is the value of silence, right? Take your time to answer. Take your time asking your questions. Don't just rattle them off as quickly as possible. When you leave some silence and take a pause before asking the next question, this will encourage your interviewee to go deeper. Now, don't do this with every question. That may sound a little creepy. But when you get into the questions where you're going into the more emotional stuff, where you're going into the more unfamiliar stuff, giving your subject some space Creating that pause with silence invites them to go deeper into what they have to say. And that takes me to number five on my list of steps, and that is cultivating privileged moments. Now, a privileged moment is when you're filming and your interviewee confronts something that is emotional or maybe unfamiliar to them. These moments are really some of the most important in your interview. And at their best, they're moments when your subject also learns something new about themselves or how they feel. In my mind, interviewing is really exploring that leads to understanding. And the best interviews are ones where when I'm finished, both I and the subject feel like we've learned something. That's when you have that confluence between testimony and heartfelt eloquence. Thanks for watching this video all the way to the end. I really appreciate you. I'd love to hear your comments. Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> and if you haven't already, please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. And when you do, write in the comments, I subscribe. Cheers, and I'll see you next week.